Us, you kind of touched upon this topic as we as you answered the previous question, but if you could elaborate on how do we decolonize our thought process when it comes to culture? What is your view? I'll draw from Mr. Wembu's point. You can theorize as much as you want, but if there is no element of practice which is part of your daily life, all of this is useless. All of this is useless. If for something as esoteric and lofty as moksha, you treat experience as the primary pramana, so to speak, in some ways, I would ask myself, why would you choose to apply a lesser proof or a lesser source of proof for other aspects? Mm. If anybody were to, let's say, go through my timeline of 2015 or until 2015 on Twitter, I was mouthing the very same nonsense that I accuse people of in my book. I don't even wish to run away from it because I own up to the fact that whether I've evolved or not, I certainly seem to have learned a few things. Okay. And in addition to that, what made a huge difference was after the, I, I think I've said this in one of my, I think some podcasts that uh, after the Sabarimala experience or around that period, one of my relatives who is, uh, uh, a former civil servant who has given up civil service to do Paurohityam in the NCR, comes from a lineage of that. Um, he specifically came and said, what is the point of all your talks? It's useless. Don't do it. Do you do Trikala Sandhya Vandaram? If not, it's useless. <laughs> That's it. There couldn't have been a royal slap on my face, a better slap on my face. I said, okay, chalo, then we'll do something. I will not have the first meal of the day until I do Sandhya Mandaram, under any circumstances. Now the thing is you keep traveling, what do you do then? You have an erratic schedule, what do you do then? Well, that's where you have workarounds, which is not to give up the practice, but to ensure that the practice is enmeshed as part of your daily schedule. How do you go about doing it? So assume for a moment, uh, so I was uh, like Vembu sir, I went for a uh, let's say a, a pilgrimage of sorts of to several temples. Now at one place I didn't have the Panchapatram for this. I didn't have the, what do you need, the Udrani and this thing. So I, I didn't have it at all. What did I do? So in Telugu we call it Kobbari Chippa, which is the coconut, okay. So that's what I used as my Udrani. I didn't have, I, that, that's what I used as the Panchapatram and from that I started doing the, uh, the Sandhya Vandam ritual. Now what if you don't have water? What do you do then? So, Apparently, vibhuti is a substitute for water, should you not have it. Now that means consistency is important. Then there are workarounds. But the brilliant answer that I think Hindus have given themselves these days is, Isme kya rakha hai? Your heart should be clean. <laughs> <laughs> what a lousy, lazy answer. The laziest of answers anybody can give. <laughs> heart should be clean, it seems. Our hearts are clean, it seems. What is this? I mean, I don't understand. That's not the way to go about it. That is how you de-ritualize and that's how you de-Hinduize. That's the straightforward answer. In stark contrast, despite my serious differences of opinion, and I don't believe in Hindu-Jewish friendship like most people do. I don't. Multiple reasons exist. It's a collaboration of convenience, period. But, but if you go there, the Orthodox Jew, so in 2016, June, I was uh, with my family uh, in the US for my brother's convocation. I'll just take 30 seconds. I'm so sorry. So a couple of Jewish friends had invited me to deliver a lecture in uh, Rochester. And they asked me what would be your choice of venue? I said the synagogue. And they said on which day? I said Sabbath. Uh, it was an orthodox Jewish synagogue because I wanted to see how they observe it. That was the purpose. So my talk was scheduled for the lunch session. So they said, if you want, you can come directly to the lunch session. We don't wish to offend your religious sensibility, so you can skip the entire service. I said, I will be a part of the entire service from the morning. It's a three and a half hour service. I was there for the entire service wearing the yarmulke and everything, I was there. And I told them I need one person sitting next to me explaining everything that's going on. 
that's what they did okay and you should see this was the cream of the american society judges lawyers ophthalmologists the dean of the brandeis university this university that university everybody was sitting there and they had attended this particular lecture now the thing is when on sabbath there are rules with respect to access to metal and electronics which are supposed to follow and i told them i will not violate a single rule which violates this particular uh, practice and i did that if you go to israel people who are in the tech business or what not they need to work but they also need to observe sabbath they have evolved technological solutions to observe sabbath by the way that is commitment so when someone says technology has to be pitted in an adversarial fashion to religion and what not well i'm sorry this is the talk of an idiot who neither understands technology nor religion <laughs> if you want to do it you can do it there is no divide here whatsoever and i think that divide needs to be broken as far as the hindu mind is concerned of all the let's say minds this is the mind that is most polluted with this particular divide which has chosen to buy into this binary nonsense the day we percolate that barrier and break it to smithereens i think half the job is done